While the New York Times on Monday claimed in an article that 2019 was the darkest year yet in journalists in the Trump era, going on to say that, quote, Mr. Trump's vilification of the news media is a hallmark of his tenure and a jagged break from the norms of his predecessors. Once a global champion of the free press, the presidency has become an inspiration to autocrats and dictators who ape Mr. Trump's cry of fake news. Here with his reaction, Joe Concha, media reporter for The Hill and a radio talk show host. Joe, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. So uh, 2019, uh, darkest year yet for journalists, according to The New York Times? I would disagree with that profoundly. And I know under another administration, the previous one, there were some pretty dark times for journalists then, I Steve. remember that. Really? Sure. Oh, you got uh, our Mr. Rosen. Well, exactly. James Rosen, formerly of this network, was spied upon, called a flight risk. His parents mm -hmm. were spied upon. The Obama administration, Steve, rejected more FOIA requests, Freedom of Information Act requests, right. than any other administration. They seized hundreds of phone records from individual journalists at the Associated Press. I don't remember the New York Times talking about how that was a dark time for journalists because they agreed with the administration. Administration that was in power at that time, right. the Obama administration. Quite frankly, they have not endorsed a Republican for president in more than 60 years. Well, you know, Joe, when you think about the press, you always want access to the president. Yeah. Name a president who has been on TV or, you know, if there's a camera over there at Mar-a-Lago and there's a <laughs> microphone, he's going to walk up to it and talk to uh, whoever is going to ask him questions until they're done asking questions. We always hear how President Trump is a big threat to journalists and reporters. I've never seen more books written about one president, more successful books, and to your point, a more accessible president right. than Donald Trump in terms of he has taken more questions directly from reporters than Obama, Bush, Clinton, Bush Sr., Reagan, go back through the broadcast era. He has taken more questions. Therefore, how is he a threat, therefore, if right. you're speaking right to the man himself? Well, uh, according to the New York Times, uh, Mr. Trump used the term fake news 273 times. That could be a political thing. Yeah. Uh, it could be spin. But then again, how many times have stories turned out not to be true? Every study, and I, I pour over these things, research from nonpartisan mm -hmm. places like Pew, show that this president has been covered at a clip of 92% negative, 93% negative. Mm -hmm. So when he criticizes them back, and not, they're not used to that from presidents, he is exercising his First Amendment right to criticize those who are, it's not just that the reporting is negative, right. it has become obviously hostile. And with the Mueller report, it was always for two years based on the assumption that President Trump is guilty until proven mm -hmm. innocent instead of the other way around. He has every right to criticize the press. Back in the olden days, when I went to journalism school, reporting was just the facts. But now, when you read a lot of these news stories, there's a lot of opinions in there. And they're not opinions from somebody who's a source. It's opinions of the writer. Right. It's almost like a, a Dear Diary type of thing, right? Like, here are the facts, but here's how I feel about mm -hmm. it as well. I don't know if you'll remember the movie Broadcast News, 1987. I do. Right. And at one point, uh, you have an anchor on there saying, you know what? I think we're all going to be OK now. And there's this curmudgeon of a director in the control room saying, who the hell cares what you think? Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of Americans are thinking right now. I don't want to know what you think. I just want to know the facts. Right. And the bottom line is we even had the New York Times today talking about how hundreds of Iraqi mourners tried to storm the U.S. Embassy. Mourners, really. The, the people who lit the place on fire? Those yeah, people? I believe they're supportive of Hezbollah. Mm. Hezbollah is a terrorist organization. Call them for what they are. So when we see things like this calling these people that tried to attack a U.S. Embassy mourners, that's why there's distrust in the media. That's not the word I would use. I would say terrorist or pro-Iranian militant, Steve. All right, Joe Concha. Joe, thank you very much. Great Happy to New see Year. you, Steve. Happy New Year. 2020, wow, that was fast. Indeed, no kidding. <laughs>